Good evening. Good evening. And welcome as we gather and continue our journey to the places of the Passion. Tonight we journey to the Mount of Olives. We'll begin with our invocation. <clears throat> grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Let us ever walk with Jesus. Receive the death of God. Behold the gift of his forgiveness. <coughs> to gaze upon the heights of his grace. To marvel at the magnitude of his mercy. We walk with Jesus to the Mount of Olives. He sang a hymn overflowing with hope. For those the sheep will be scattered. After Christ is raised, he will go before them into Galilee. Faithful Lord, with me abide, I shall follow and where he died. We'll join in our opening hymn, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. God, 
now and forever. Amen. For Old Testament reading, the basis for the message this evening from 2 Chronicles 20. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, and with them some of the Meunites, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea and beyond. Behold, they are in Hazan Tamer, that is, Egelid. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, son of Dina, son of Geo, son of Matana, a Levite of the sons of Ashba, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they will come up by ascent of these. You will find them at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid, and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. Then Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will succeed. When he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire, as they went before the army and say, Give thanks to the Lord, for his steadfast love endures forever. When they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so that they were routed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, this reading is from 1 Thessalonians 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecy, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our holy gospel is from Matthew 26. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, O Christ. We sing our hymn of the day, Holy God, we praise thy name. Florida. 
So imagine a submerged, stale, air-filled tin can surrounded by warm water that was bringing the temperatures inside to about 120 degrees. As you can imagine, the result was after a while, the men were exhausted. They were on edge. And while on edge with country tensions high, that's when the captain, he lost it. He snapped. The captain, in the lack of clarity moment, in the heat of confusion and frustration, he ordered that three nuclear missiles were to be launched in three minutes on three American cities. And it was this man, this Vasily Arkhipov, who was one of the key officers of that sub that changed everything. He talked to the captain. He asked him to reconsider what he was about to do. He would not concur with the order to fire. And Arkhipov's words and fears, they must have been calming and persuasive because the captain ended up listening his anger cooled, and the Soviet sub went back home. The Soviets at that time, they hid this. And they hid it because of how close disaster had come that day. All because of thanks to words of encouragement from our composed voice, de-escalation happened. Calm came, and here we are today. I'm telling you this story not because of the tensions in Russia and the Ukraine right now, although it is fitting. I tell you this because of the importance of words that bring cooler heads, that cause reflection, that cause second thoughts, especially in the midst of struggles to give hope and direction. You know what I mean by needing hope and direction in the midst of explosions, not atomic explosions or nuclear, although it can feel like that when it strikes. You know the circumstances in your lives that push you to the edge, that push you to that breaking point, that screaming break where you've had so much that, that, can't, that you can't think straight anymore, or you can't see any kind of clarity or any kind of hope. Things like when we're being given a hard time by a co-worker or a boss. When family members and parents or our children push all the wrong buttons and tensions rise and words are spoken and actions are taken, it's hard to not push the button and just go nuclear over the whole thing. You know, life in general, it can escalate us from calm to DEFCON 1. From peace to all-out war. You know, when the, when, the, when the bills come and the money doesn't seem to keep up with it, when the workload of school gets overwhelming, when families struggle to stay together, when businesses are trying to make it in these post-COVID days, when our bodies give us so many problems and it's getting tiresome, when we just feel sick of it all, and when we want to just give up, when we just want to explode, what can we do? What can we do when our defenses are down, our frustrations are high, our confusion is great? How can we keep our heads when everyone else is losing theirs? Would you believe that we can sing a song? And I'm not talking about the breaking out into a musical number like West Side Story or Singing in the Rain or High School Musical. Singing, it can also mean to reflect on words, to listen what's being said, to take heart to what you hear, and then to speak those words, repeat them, find comfort in them, find strength in them, find direction in them. That's what songs do. We hear it, and it evokes an emotion, a, a comfort, a joy. It's a release, a clarity, and a hope. I know for me today, with the sun on and how beautiful it was today, my radio was a little louder than it has been for a while. 
Because it just brought joy that it was such a beautiful day today. That's what music does. It gets us excited. It gets us encouraged. You know, we see this encouragement to sing and to receive the benefits in our Old Testament reading for today. As war is about to start, a highly outnumbered war at that, with God's people at the disadvantage, remember what we were told? And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed at the great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them, you will not need to fight in the battle. Stand firm. Hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. And Jehoshaphat, his response to this news from the Lord was to encourage singing a song. He said, and when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire as they went before the army and say, Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set an ambush so that they were routed. You know, a commentator described this scene. What a sight God places before our eyes. He says, An entire nation marches out to a battlefield against very real enemies armed with swords and shields, slings and spears. Yet Jehoshaphat's people look more like a congregation leaving church than an army going to war. All the same, the army of God is marching out fully equipped, he wrote. They have the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, and an attitude of prayer in their hearts. You know, in our gospel lesson for today, our destination stop on the places of the Passion is the Mount of Olives. We find Jesus encouraging a similar song and praise, way, a way to bring about hope and to be seen through. And he's about to face a nuclear attack on his very being, the destruction of his very life. What does Jesus do in his final time after the Monday Thursday meal? And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Psalms may have been the words that were traditionally sung at the end of the Passover meal. Here are some of the words. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. The Lord has delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You see, Jesus and the disciples, they sang at the end of the Passover meal because they knew how the Lord has seen his children through the past. They sang of God faithfully keeping his promises. They sang of his goodness and his mercy, his strength and peace that he uses for our good. <coughs> Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever was on their lips. And then after they sang those words, now they go out to the Mount of Olives. They go with the disciples, and as they approach those songs of God's goodness and mercy and strength and peace, the fact is, is they're going to be vital for the disciples. Because in a short time, while they're here at the Mount of Olives, the fact is, is in a short time, soldiers are going to come. And they're going to take Jesus from them. Jesus is about to be betrayed. He's about to be betrayed by a kiss. And then his life is going to be filled with deniers. And there's slappers and beaters and spitters and whippers and mockers. And then there will be the nailers. As the events of Good Friday unfold, 
as Jesus is hanging on the cross at Calvary, as he is suffering and dying, paying for man's sins, paying for your sins and my sins, all those things in thought, word, and deed that we fall short in, as he pays for them with his blood shed, as Jesus experiences the full wrath and promise of God's warning that the wages of sin is death, the disciples are watching it all unfold. And they need a song to uplift them, to unite them, to strengthen them, and to see them through. But the very Son of God, as He suffers and dies before their eyes, they need direction for their confusion. They need comfort for their broken hearts. They need courage in their fearful times. They need hope when all seems lost. The disciples need songs of promise. And Jesus had given it to them. You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But he said, after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. You see, they need to be reminded of that song, that the death they see is not the end of the story for Jesus. He said, after I am raised up. In other words, Jesus said, I will see you again. Jesus, he, he had been singing them songs of what must happen and what the results would be. He began to teach them, Scripture says, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. A little while you will see me no longer, and again a little while and you will see me. I have overcome the world, Jesus said. These are the songs in their hearts and minds that they can sing that they can find comfort and strength in holding on to God's power, His love, and His songs that celebrate and bring victory. You know, you and I, during this Lent, you and I are invited to go to the Mount of Olives. We're invited to see Jesus' love unfold for us. We are given the songs, the words to know for ourselves in the same. So that when everything looks bleak and dark, when we're tempted to go nuclear in frustration and anger, when we want to just give up and give in, you and I have been given songs to sing. That the end is not the end. With Jesus, the end is never the end. That there is death, but there is also resurrection. There is Golgotha, but there is also Galilee. And so in life, in life when the bills come, it's not the end. When the doctor tells us that diagnosis, it's not the end. When people push all the wrong buttons in our lives and we want to explode, it's not the end. When that overwhelmingly impossible situation comes up, it's not the end. Jesus always brings a new beginning in this life and in eternity, always. So we can go to the Mount of Olives. We can sing, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde of life. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds clinging to Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, the offering will be brought forward.
Heavenly Father, thank you for the calling, privilege, and importance of singing your praises and celebrating your goodness. That's why we say, and from morn to set of sun, though the church's song goes on. Heavenly Father, to worship you through Jesus and in the Spirit is our greatest delight and most solemn obligation. That's why we believe, and from morn to set of sun, through the church the song goes on. Heavenly Father, forgive us for dismissing worship so easily and taking it so lightly, because it's you we meet with. May we come expectant and ever more grateful, so we are prepared to sing, and from morn to set of sun, through the church the song goes on. Heavenly Father, continue to feed our minds with your word. Fill our hearts with your presence and empower our worship by your spirit. May we not be selfish consumers looking to be pleased, but be true worshipers longing to be consumed with your glory and grace. Empower us to believe, and from morn to set of sun, through the church the song goes on. Heavenly Father, through our united songs and praises, we pray that we will be humbled, gladdened, and transformed, and that the nations will be drawn to your saving love. Jesus, let me faithful be, life eternal grant to me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites us to walk with him to the Mount of Olives, a place of great suffering and a place of great love. We will walk with Jesus all the way to the empty tomb and resurrection victory. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and eternally. Amen. Let us ever walk with Jesus. We close with our hymn, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. 